That organisation that killed, murdered, slaughtered over 50 million people. From the 1200s to the 1800s. Beginning of the 1800s. <gasps> over 50 million people. Christians, non-Christians. Nominal Christians. Didn't matter to the papacy. If you were not a papist, you died. And where do we hear that again? Islam. The papacy is red with the blood, hands dripping with the blood of the millions. Just look at the Reformation. The period of the Reformation it sums it up. It sums it up. Do you know in the 1200s people could see what the papacy would become? That it was a beast. A beast that was taken over. Had taken over, rather. Imperial Rome taking the place and what a beast what a fearsome beast hmm what a horrendous beast that continued from the big from when it first found its feet again against Imperial Rome hmm How about all the Waldensians and Albigenses? Hmm? Hmm? That were slaughtered by Rome. Hmm? Now then, we're thinking there of the Tobites, aren't we? The Tobites! Little heard of, little understood. Thousands upon thousands of Tobites murdered by the papacy. All because people wouldn't bow down to the papacy. The papacy said that it was the only true rule of all creation and that salvation itself is only to be had in the Roman Church. Roman Church. Declaring itself where it was born. In Imperial Roman times by the Imperial Roman Church. Hmm? It is the Antichrist. <clears throat> Romanism is the Antichrist. Hmm? And of course today we're not allowed to speak of this. Oh, the, the neo-evangelicals come up and say, Oh no, the Antichrist is going to be future. Alright. Within the... School of interpretation. Oh, it's going to be future. They're not interested in the past because the past tells the truth. It's always future, you see. With these historicists and millennialists and post millennialists and all the rest of it. It's always future, 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 future. It's always far off. It's a distraction, you see, because they're warming against us. And the best way to try, if they can, to beat us, is to throw us off into the future. Oh, it's future. Future never happens, you see, within their scheme of things. Never happens. Always changes. And then they change. Their scheme of things. Snide. Subtle. 
snakes. Venomous. Hmm? I like how the Pope's the Pope of Rome signed a concordat with Hitler not to persecute his church. <laughs> oh, but we're not allowed to speak of this, are we? Uh, and if you didn't bow down to the pigging Pope of Rome, you were put to death. If your child repeated the Lord's Prayer, he was taken away and probably never seen again. Or given a good thrashing by the priest. But mainly you didn't have your child returned to you. He was taken away. This monster, this monster gave no one, but no one, freedom of speech, freedom of thought. Everything had to be as Roman Catholicism, as they call it. It's nothing but the Roman Imperial Church. Everything had to be as she stated it to be. And you bow down and you lift the boots of the priests and the cardinals and kiss the ring of the Pope. In fact, you could never get into the Pope. He was so holy. He was God upon earth. Everything that you did had to be accepted by Rome. It was worse than communism. So your best bet was to keep your mouth shut. And even then, if somebody fell out, somebody hated you, go to a priest. He said this, transubstantiation is a lie, he says. Priests will be down there, grab you, off you went. Star chamber, prison, tortured, burnt, whatever they fancied. It was hell upon earth. Hell upon earth. Because the Antichrist stood blatantly, openly upon earth. There were times when she couldn't do anything. To some people, such as Wycliffe. And there were times when wholesale mass murder went on. And in between all this, you see, if you've got your Wycliffe, you've also got the individuals who were picked upon, who weren't in the high status of the likes of Whitcliffe. If you were just a, a person going about your business and somebody falsely accused you, you'd be whipped off to the prison, to the star gym and all the picking rest of it. You'd have no chance. Anyhow. This monster, okay, is covered up by the doctrines that men have brought about. Hmm? Futurism! <clears throat> Again, historicism, futurism. Walking hand in hand with millennialism and the rest. Okay, the spirit's there. Look to the future. Look to the future. It's all the future. Future, future, future. And if you can't get to the future, you can get to the pigging past. All right, now here comes the dubious pieces. We have Rome, the beast, the second beast of the book of the Revelation of Jesus Christ in chapter 13. She is portrayed there. 666 six, six she ends up with. The trinity of man. Man is numbered six. God is the number that has been defined by men Loosely as eight. Eight, eight, eight. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Man is created on the sixth day, therefore his number is six. 
the trinity of man. What is the trinity of man? Man is God, the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, who declares him to be the trinity, the Pope of Rome. Papa, the Holy Father. Hmm? The head of the church, Jesus Christ. Ex cathedra, and he doesn't even have to go to that. It's just a term. Ex cathedra. Because he's infallible, according to, what was it? 1826 or 1812? Infallibility, so everything he spoke was infallible. And then they, of course, when getting embarrassment, they say, oh, well, it's, it's only ex cathedra. They play word games. Mind games with us. Word games, mind games. Oh, yeah, when they're caught out, oh, well, yeah, it's over. But, no. Whenever he speaks, it's ex cathedra. It's ex cathedra. Now then, because of the overwhelming situation of the doctrine of eschatology against Romanism, in declaring that Romanism is the Antichrist, it was accepted. For decades, it was the Antichrist. People knew that this was going to happen, indeed. That Romanism were going to be the Antichrist. So what happens? Hmm? What happens? Well, we go through a period of the Reformation, affirming it. We go through the period of the Puritans, affirming it. And then we come to the end of the... Puritan era and come into the late 1700s and 1800s and there arose the likes of Francis Ribera and others who began to push the doctrine of futurism. Eh? Hmm? And I'm sure you can bring up many a man Many a papist that was involved. Here, there, and everywhere. Ribera, Francisco Ribera, taught that the first few chapters of the book of the Revelation of Jesus Christ are played, applied to ancient times. To ancient pagan Rome, in fact. Hmm? Equally brought in, because at the time he was had a falling out with Rome, that there would be three and a half years of great tribulation. And that the papacy would fall into apostasy. <laughs> fall into apostasy. It was the Antichrist. He knew it was the Antichrist. Hmm? And then, of course, when it's fallen into apostasy, he said, the Antichrist would arrive. The Antichrist? So you've got Imperial Rome as Antichrist, because Christ came in that period and was against, directly against Christ, would crucify Christ, along with the Jews. Then you've got the papacy as the second beast, 
So where's the third beast in the book of the Revelation, chapter 13? Because the first beast of chapter 13 is imperial Rome. It's a secular, universal power that is described there. And the kings, they had kings at the beginning. They had ten kings at the beginning. Then went over to the senatorial setup. All right? And then what should follow on in history itself shows us is, in, is, is the Roman church as in a book the Revelation chapter 13 it's there it's there and that's what happened because it was all laid down in heaven before the world began all this but when man get hold of the scriptures oh it's all changing no you can't change the mind of God the mind of God has already played all this out and because it's all been played out it's all been written out for us okay and of course, Ribera, being what he was, declared that the temple would be built in Jerusalem. Hmm? Rebuilt. And so the Muslim uh, mosque then is going to be what, bombed? Hmm? Or bulldozers going in? The Muslims defeated and scattered? And the temple... Put on Temple Mount again? Is that what it's going to be? Or something like that? Huh? And of course he said the, the, the Antichrist will blaspheme the saints of God. Meaning the Papists. <laughs> huh? He will defy Jesus Christ. And be received by the Jews. And be a political leader. And then, once he's taken hold of the Jews, got their confidence, they put their faith in him, all right? He would then retaliate upon them. And then he would be defeated, so on and so on and so on and so on and so forth. And of course, you've got your thousand-year reign of Jesus Christ when he should come again as the Messiah and sit upon a upholstered throne and all the neo-evangelicals will sit with him. <laughs> Not a Calvinist in sight. <laughs> Calvin, hey! Says the neo-evangelical as he, as he sits on his throne, his Arminian throne. Hey? Luther, Calvin, hey! Huh? Wycliffe, hey! You're not sitting here, are you? And for a thousand years, precisely, Jesus Christ will reign as the Messiah. And all the rites and the rituals and the ceremonies and the feast days, etc., etc., will be performed in front of these neo evangelicals and their Christ for a thousand years, and all the world shall come and watch. Oh, our billions of people trying to get into Palestine. <laughs> hey! Hey! I mean, this is the stupidity of these people. Eh? And if you can't come to Palestine, you'll be cursed of God. Well, you can't get out of your country because there's so many billions of people, inclusive of yourself, that you can't get to Palestine, so you're going to be cursed in the end. God have blinded their eyes that they may not see, isn't it? Hmm? Stop their ears that they may not hear. God! 
Oh, except if you're neo-evangelical, then God loves everybody and opens everybody's ears and eyes and saves them. Okay. Um, and that's how it is. And of course, when the thousand years is up, the supreme power, according to neo-evangelical Arminians, is the devil. Because the devil brings to naught the reign of Jesus Christ, at least their Jesus Christ. Okay, it's not our Jesus Christ. But their Jesus Christ, their, their Aryan Jesus Christ, their Jesus Christ of commitments. Their Jesus Christ that we must fulfil the law, along with having put our notional faith in their Jesus Christ. And it is their Jesus Christ that equally hands out the second blessing and full sanctification. If we, require, if we desire to have it, and if we desire to be on fire for God, their Jesus Christ will provide it. Their Jesus Christ will provide all these things and more. Divine healing. You have bread on the table. You don't have to go out to work, you know. Oh, no, you've just got to be a, a, a faith warrior, a prayer warrior. And somebody will knock at your door. Got some bread here. Would you like some bread or overbaked this morning? Eh? Anyhow, let's get back to this futurism. We, we, Francis Ribeira. Okay. There was Bellarmine. Was another one. Hmm? 